Welcome back to Transfer Talk, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, it's here for a third week, and of course it is staying. There's no Henry this week, he's off on his holly bobs, but McCubbin has joined me. How yes. are you, my friend? Welcome. I'm, very, I'm very excited to be on FD's latest uh, game show. Exactly, it's basically it. what it is. Yeah. It's basically what it is. Now, obviously, the way this works, we talk about the latest transfers, whether they are feeling clickbait or nailed on to happen, or do we hate it or do we love it? We're quickly going to go through some of what's happened over the past couple of weeks. Uh, Matoma seems pretty good. Gallagher, Victor Osman seems pretty good. What I want to give a shout out to, they laughed at me. They laughed at you. They, they laughed yeah, at they me. They did laugh at you. Yeah. I put Off it there. In your face. Now, look, you're not laughing now. Are you? Uh, as a UKIP member once said. Uh, Harry Kane? Yes. We can throw that over done. here, essentially. He's done. He's gone. Throw it off. He's done. He's, we love it. It's nailed on and now it's done. Exactly. Away. Well done. Can I say can we go? Doing this as well? Yeah. Perfect. We Brilliant. Lovely. Uh, Dean Henderson. Yeah. A um, little bit stagnated, hasn't it? Yeah. I think he wants the move. But Matt Turner, decent debut for Nottingham Forest. Against his old club. Against his old club, indeed. The issue for him is, obviously, he wants the move. United don't have a second-choice goalkeeper. Well, I think we still kind of love the move for him, but I think it's got to go a bit more over here. A little Mikey, bit over right? here. I feel like there could be some progress with it. As, as the transfer window wears okay. on, but we'll see, we'll see, we'll uh, see. Elise. Elise, well. To Chelsea, it looks Chelsea like it's tonight. happening now, so Chelsea's let's put yeah. that right over by Stay clickbait. There. I yep. think we can move James Ward Prowse as well. Off I, I, the let's board. not put it all the way by clickbait because okay. you, you never it's know. Not done yet. You never it's know. Not done you never yet. know Man City could sweep in. But Ward Prowse yeah, can go because he's obviously joined West Ham. Yeah. Goodbye, James Ward-Prowse. Love it. And Romeo Lavia can go because it looks like he Ooh. is set to deal uh, with He's basically Chelsea. Done. He's basically exactly. Done, he? But that is the board so far. Actually, Harry Maguire, get him over also, left. Yeah, and Carl oh, Walker yeah, signed a new oh, contract. Yeah, get him Walker, off the yeah, board. Let's get Carl Walker off the board. Sad about that one because I was really hoping Carl Walker would uh, go to Bayern Munich, but he is off. <laughs> Love it. Um, Harry Maguire, well, let, let's, keep, let's put it down here because I, I still think there's a chance that could get done before. Okay. The end of the window. Also, Elise, actually, let's maybe put him down there because City also looking at Paqueta. Are they going? And, you know, and I, Jeremy Doku. And Jeremy well. Doku. So yeah, I think um, I think Elise is almost well, almost completely out of it. But let's not rule anything. We out may just yet. talk a little bit about Man City in this video, but let's get into it then. Let's start off. Have you got the fresh new cards, the new matches ready yes. for you? Who's our first one? We're talking about McCubbin. Please come on down. Both Kukurea. And Tierney. Yes. Kukurea and Tierney. Exactly. To Newcastle. Exactly. That is the headline. It looks like Newcastle are after a left back. Um, they are looking to bolster their defensive options. But they are wary of FFP. And so they're careful about making some deals. I think they're also looking at possibly Lewis Hall, who's currently at Chelsea. Mm. There were links to him to go to Crystal Palace. Kukurea also at Chelsea. Tierney now Arsenal. Firstly, yeah. Tierney side of things. June Timber. We've seen yeah. that injury happen now. Yeah. A little bit less likely. I think so. I think so. Um, yeah, I, I, they only have Tierney really as that backup left back now at Arsenal. Timber could be out for the season, um, d depending on th how things go. So I feel like it's unlikely Arsenal will sell Tierney, even if Tierney wants to be a starter. And there's been you know rumblings that he'd be up for a Newcastle move. Kukurea, meanwhile, also on a, quite a big contract on quite big wages, but. Just feels a bit more gettable because yeah. Chelsea, he's not first choice wing back. He's not first choice left centre back now with Colwell. Ian um, Matson's take, there now. Ian too. Matson is there as well, of course. Um, and Ian Matson, I, I rate as as a, as a wing back really, as an attacking wing back, uh, more than Kukurea. Doesn't feel like a Pochettino kind of player. Yeah. In, in, in terms of at least in terms of an attacking fullback. So I feel like Kukurea is a bit more likely. However, it's still, you know, Chelsea will still want to make some money back on, on the ridiculous Definitely. fee they paid last year. Big wages. I think with, with loan Newcastle seems like the first the Maybe, first maybe option, for a loan. Maybe. I I quite like Kukurea to Newcastle personally. Tierney, let's let's just forget about Tierney. Cool. Here. Hide his face. Let's, let's just let's just have have think about Kukurea here. I quite like it personally. I think he's a good passer. As we saw, you know, Eddie Howe doesn't need to have like a flying left back. Yeah. Um, as we saw with, with Dan Byrne last year, someone who can kind of defend first, decent passer. I quite like it. I'm going to put it, I might put it here. Ooh. Just because I'm a little bit, I'm not yet yeah, overly convinced about, you know, I think there's there's other left backs on the table as well. I like it. So I might put it, in fact, no, I'll put it, I'll put it here. Because there is, there is concrete, this is, th these reports are coming from the Telegraph. 
Um, also, let's maybe put, do we put Sofian Amrabat back a little bit? It's up to you if you want to cut a bit of a little play. bit quiet. Yep. Yeah, it's gone a little bit quiet with the Amadou Onana stuff, well, which we'll get see. onto in a bit. Um, but yeah, Kukurea, I, I like it, but yeah, let, let's see. And it's and legitimate it. reporting, legitimate reporting. Um, but yeah, I'm not yeah not sure about the structure Brilliant. of that deal. Brilliant. Yet. Okay, on to our next one then. A possible transfer between two huge rival clubs. This is big. Spurs and Arsenal. Come on down. Follow in Balogun. Yes. Follow in Balogun. Indeed. Yes. Indeed. Now, this is obviously the news that Tottenham was supposedly interested in following Balogun. It comes from Gazzetto Dello Sport. Mm. Now, the last time Arsenal and Spurs agreed on a transfer was for Pat Jennings back in 1977. Now, people might be sitting there behind the camera going, what about William Gallas? What about Sol Campbell? Those were obviously on freeze on Bosmans. Yeah. But they don't quite count, whereas this would have to be a decent chunk of change. It has to be about like 50 million pounds, wouldn't it? 50 million Maybe euros, a little bit more because yeah. it is Spurs. Yeah. But he does need game time. How do yeah. we feel? Firstly, before we go to left to right, love to hate. I I think Fuller and Balogun would be pretty decent at Spurs. I think he's a he's a very they have classic centre though. forward. So they have Richarlison. Though. They do have Richarlison, um, but Richarlison can play on the left yep, as well. Chance. Although you know we didn't really see him at his best anywhere near his best when he was playing outside of the centre forward position last year. Although I do think he's better on the left than on the right. Um, but then they've also got Manuel Solomon there. Mm. So yeah, Balogun would potentially be playing back up or just splitting minutes. I just think Balogun is more of a classic centre forward than Richarlison. Okay. Um, he was really impressive at Rance. So I don't, I don't hate the move. So you'd be maybe but here-ish? It's, uh, it's just not going to happen, is it? Perfect. I don't think it's going to happen. I don't see why Arsenal, if Arsenal are able to get 40 million from a, a club in, you know, say Italy, um, for example, um, or and Tottenham offer fifty. I, I just still, I just can't see Arsenal selling to Spurs at this moment in enough. time. You know, it would just really come back to bite them if they had an academy product okay. um, scoring the winner against them in the North. <laughs> it Derby. would. It um, would. Indeed. I don't know if you, I don't, I don't know if you have any other thoughts on that. No, that... I'm very happy, mate. Let us know what you guys think of these transfers in the comments below. And where we place them on the board, would you have them anywhere else? Yeah. On to our next transfer. Who's coming on down, Mikey? West Ham are absolutely dominating this board, by the way, because it's Anthony Marshall. It is. Come indeed. on down. It is indeed. Now West um, Ham have supposedly registered interest in Marshall. The source, Talksport. Mm. Uh, but multiple r reports are saying that West Ham um, have been interested in him for a little while now. He already supposedly earns £250,000 a week at Manchester United. He's got one year left on his deal. Don't think he'll be quite getting those wages no. on the books at West Ham. He is quite injury prone. I feel like this is maybe more this half of the table. Yeah, I don't like it. I don't like it one bit. I just think <laughs> like even, even if you give him a, a pay cut, he's still going to want a, a decent wedge. Yeah, and of course. I think, yeah, his injury, like, to be fair, last season when he was fit, he was actually quite good. Like, Eric Ten Hag likes him for I a reason. Hope. But the in yeah, the injury problems, you just can't get past them. Um, I'm going to put it, I'm going to put it around here because there have been a few reports, but yeah, I'm not a fan at all. I was going to say as well, we've got... We Dominic Solanke, where, where did we put him now? Because I feel like Bournemouth just are not going to sell this After, guy. Especially the start of the season. Yeah, Can I think... Can move I, him a little bit further let, down? Let's, let's move him, let's move him... Let's move him underneath Balogun here. I don't see Solanke going unless West Ham put up stupid money, which, yeah. to be fair, if Paqueta leaves, maybe they will. Maybe they will. Well, they've but got the money from Declan Rice. Add the Paqueta move. Yeah. That so, maybe, actually, know, actually you know what? Maybe let, let, let's put him here because you okay. never know if, if West Ham put in a silly offer. But at the moment, yeah, I can't see that happening. OK, interesting. That's where Marshall's going to go. Yeah. It just feels a little bit too good to be true. Um, and also, do not like the move from either standpoint. I don't like I mean, I think Marshall is, it, like, West Ham's a good level for Marshall. Like, he could be a star on a team like that. But, yeah, the fitness issues are just, yeah, they're just too much. It, it would be too much. OK, the next player, Mikey. Amadou Onana. Yes, Amadou the big Onana. one. The big one. Now, Manchester United supposedly approached Everton for Onana. Um, now, Everton are supposedly reluctant to sell the 21-year-old mm. and they would want a bid of at least 50 million British pounds to stand a chance of selling him. Obviously, Onana joined them last summer for 33 million pounds. Chelsea have also been interested in him with the Lavia stuff, the Kaiser stuff. That yes, is probably going to drop off a lot. Um, now, United are yet to make any progress in their pursuit of Sufian Amrabat. Mm. So where do we feel about this? I don't know if I... It's a lovely idea, but I think Everton... They say 50 million at least. It would probably be 60 million at least, especially in a post, uh, um, what's the name, Caicedo and yeah. post Romeo Lavia market that we're looking at now. Um, has, you know, for instance, has La if I went to you Lavia and Onana, 
where do you, they are different players, yeah. but where do you think they are on the kind of progression level so far, or maybe the future I think, level? I think Anana is at a, uh, is probably at a, a slightly better level, just because we've seen experience, him. Experience, yeah. just more experience, and he's a, he's old. He's two years older. He was brilliant for Lille, yeah. and he was great for Everton last season as well. Whereas Lavia, we've only really seen him play top level football at Southampton, who were who were pretty poor last year. Mm. He had his moments, but sixty million is is a lot for him. Uh, but I still think 60 million is a lot for Onana, especially given that United, you know, when you look into Onana's stats, um, he's not much of a passer. He again, he's a no. bit of a driver. He is, a, you know, he is a defensive midfielder. He's more of a driver. United kind of have drivers in that midfield already. What they really need is someone who can control play a little bit more, which is what Sofian Amrabat is more. And I think Sofian Amrabat, even if Fiorentina are going to charge maybe more, uh, than they would have, say, a few weeks ago. I think he's still a better value um, than Onana. He can come into that side straight away and we know what he is. Onana, not quite sure how yeah. he would work alongside Casemiro. Um, don't, you don't played, hate the move, though, necessarily, because he is still very young, can be developed he's still young. as well. He's still, he's, still, he's, still, he's still fine, um, but I'm going to put that here. Also, yeah. question marks over, you know, given that the Maguire move is, is you know, almost off, um, or at the moment it's off, like where where's that money, money coming yeah. from for United? And I don't true. think United right now could spend sixty million pounds. Very um, true. So I'm, actually, I'm going to stick it here. I'm okay. going to stick it here. It's funny how each episode actually kind of the, they kind of gravitate towards each corner. This episode feels like a lot over here. Yeah, we're pretty episode, down on these ones. We were over here a lot more. Um, okay, we're going to stick with right? Manchester United yes. though for our next one. Who is it, my cubs? Benjamin Pavard. I love Benjamin the Pavard. pronunciation. Come on down. Yeah, well, I don't know what "come on down" is in French, but let's know in the comments come on, below. Come on, come on down. Come on. I'm yeah, so yeah, sorry. Just, yeah, just, I apologize. Just, uh... Sport Build give us this one, McCubs. Now, they report that United have agreed personal terms with Pavard. We've seen him on the yep. Instagram. We've seen him commenting on Manchester United's 1-0 victory over Wolves. However, after the breakdown yep. in the Maguire deal, and we've mentioned it here with mm. Onana, not a lot of money there nah. to go and pay for him. Bayern Munich supposedly want a decent amount of change for him as well. Again, possibly £50 million or upwards to get his services. His contract is up at the end of next summer. You know, I'd obviously want another centre-back in there as well. And he wants to play centre-back yeah. too. Now, how are we feeling about this transfer? I'm a bit more hot on this just because with one year remaining, I feel like United could, with, with the window winding down, get a bit more of a bargain off Bayern. Um, and especially if Pavard is pushing for the move, as he seems to be, yeah. doesn't want to sign that new contract. Bayern have spent a lot of money on, on Harry Kane this summer. Like they, they could do with getting yeah, some money yeah. back for Pavard. So I'm actually all right with this. Like I think with with Maguire, like, because it's like for like, if United can finally shift him towards the end of the window, then there, there might be a bit of money. If you sold Harry Maguire, you'd much ra rather get Pavard than Onana. Um, I think, to be honest, I think Amrabat, regardless, I think needs to be United's number one. Uh, num number one uh, okay. Just because I think you need another body in that midfield, and if you can get someone who is kind of of, of an age or you know of experience like Amrabat, I think that's important. But equally, I think yeah, United do still need cover at centre back, also at right back. I think Pavard would still play some minutes at right back. Be funny um, to leave if, possibly second best team in Europe. I know obviously they, they lost yeah. to RB Leipzig and actually he started in that game, came off in the 46th minute. But it would be funny for him to leave uh, Bayern Munich and then go and join Manchester United where the hunt for trophies might be a little bit less. But also he's playing for, for sure, football. For sure, I mean, but he's also kind of done everything at, at Bayern true. Munich he at has, this point. I'm sure he'd like yeah. a new challenge. Actually, I'm not going to put it that so far that way because I do think what I might do is stick it I'll stick, you know what, I'll stick, I'll stick these guys here, or Ooh. Kukurea here, I'll stick Power here. Because I just think, also, Bayern, they do have quite a lot of right-backs, but they don't have that much quality in that position. Yeah. Masrawi, you know, his, his future has been a bit up in the air, you know, he didn't have a great first year there, did he? A bit unsettled. So I kind of think, also, will Bayern push Pavard to, to sign a new deal and maybe give him you know, uh, an offer he can't refuse, maybe, or are they, you know, they, they missed out on Carl Walker, yeah, of course, so interested. they're not in the best situation in terms of their right backs at the moment, Bar, and so I do think maybe let's, you know, hold off on Pavard a little bit. Nice. Maybe I'm being too conservative here. Look at this, there's, n there's nothing here. Actually, you know, <laughs> the next one will be, the next one well, will be a lot more. Well, let's get on to the next yeah. one then, Pavard, you're the there final one. for now. Manchester City, it yes. came out last week. Let's talk about it. Lucas Paqueta, come on down. 
to yeah. the right side of the board. Oh, wow. Okay, that is I confident. think it's going to happen. That I think is it's going to happen. Well, look, it's been reported by a lot of trustworthy journalists. Orn scenes come out about it, Fabrizio Romano, a lot of other uh, platforms as well. And that is that Paqueta could be on his way to Manchester City. They are super interested, especially after that injury to Kevin De Bruyne, which yep. may now keep him out for several months after the first game of the season. Now, possibly that could be four months as well. So a little bit more. Supposedly, an initial bit of £70 million pounds was put in and they said, no, we don't want that. Now, he does have an £85 million pound release clause for next summer. Yeah. So they know they'll probably be getting that possibly next summer if he has another decent season as well. What do you think of that? Because this could be, especially after we've seen Declan Rice, mm. especially after we've seen Caicedo, another £100 million pound move. It could be. It could be. And I, I'm not necessarily... You know what? I don't love this move, actually. I don't love it. Okay. I don't love it. Um, in fact, do I put it down here? Ooh, I don't know. I don't know. No overlapping. Having no overlapping, I'm unfortunately. Gonna, so yeah, I think I think we'll, okay. we'll, I think we'll do that. We'll do that. I mean, I don't hate it, but I don't like. I don't think it's necessarily the the kind of player that City necessarily need. Do they actually even need another midfielder? They may, maybe they do. Maybe they do. He is a good creator. He's very combative. I just feel like as a, as a KDB replacement, I'm not so sure. I feel like if they'd lost Bernardo Silva, then he seemed like a more like for like replacement with him. Uh, but I think it's going to happen. I think City, when they want a player, they tend to get yeah. them. They they are in a good financial position. I think they've posted a profit this this summer, despite the money that they spent so far. Just you know, great deals on academy players that they've got uh, that they've got done. So I think it is going to happen. Ninety to a hundred million. Yeah, it's a mad one. It's kind of come out of nowhere. And I also think that the, let, let's let's get Matoma off the board. By the Go way, on then, because I think he's. Uh, uh, yeah, like, I, don't, I don't think they're focusing on the left side no, of their attack. Sure. They're definitely focusing on the right side. Um, the fact that they've missed out on Elise as well. I think yeah. they're going to want to get someone in. Um, yeah, get get another body through the door. I feel for Phil Foden possibly if this mm. happens. Right, obviously he is the academy boy, but if he's joining the squad, he's spending a hundred million on him. I mean, I was going to say that you'd expect him to start. This is Pep Guardiola we're talking about. Jack Green signed for 100 million and, and took him a little while to get into it. Um, but then it could be a Kovacic, Rodri, Paqueta, Bernardo Silva on the right wing kind of formation and, uh, and Foden is on the bench again. We saw Foden start against Burnley and Grealish yeah. actually dropped to the bench. But who knows what happens this season. OK, I'm very happy with this board, Mikey. Good decisions. Well done. Now, I want to know what you guys think of this board and these transfers. What do you think, West Ham fans? Let us know about Paqueta leaving you guys. I think that could be a bad day if that's announced. Yeah. Declan Rice Rough and him Ham. going on the same transfer window. Look, they get a lot of money for him. And to be honest, if they're getting over 100 million, they'll probably be okay with it. They yeah, I mean, as well, well, you get replacements in. The, you need that, that's the thing, time is running out. Yeah. Edson Alvarez, great move. Yeah. Um, who else have they got in the midfield? Um, what's his chops? Uh, Ward Prowse. Uh, <laughs> yes, Ward yeah, Prowse yeah, yeah, as well. Ward so I think, I, I think those, <laughs> yeah. those, those are two great moves for West yeah, Ham. Like, you know, they, they, they have pulled them out of the bag, but Paqueta leaving, yeah, big question marks. Who, who else you know, is, is in that mould? And everyone now knows you've got 200 million uh, in the bank. Exactly. Okay, exactly. guys, let us know what you guys think of the transfers down below. If you've enjoyed this video, like it, and also subscribe to Football Daily if you haven't already. And stay tuned for tomorrow's video where the boys are talking European football for Continental Club. We'll see you later. Bye.